Do you want to know the pros and cons of living in Texas? In this video, we're gonna share all the wonderful things about living in the Lone Star State. I'm Keila McGraw, your favorite Dallas-Fort Worth realtor, and if you are thinking about relocating to a different city or a different state, Texas is probably one of those places that is on the list. As a realtor, I know how important it is to gather facts and as much information as you can before you even consider moving to another area. So I relocated here over 20 years ago from Tulsa, Oklahoma, as did my husband relocate here from Indiana. and yes we did have to learn a lot about the state and i can say that it was the best move that both of us could have made this is not an exhaustive list by any means but i think it's some great points to consider if you're thinking about moving to texas so here we go so one of the main reasons i hear different people talk about why they moved to the state of texas is because of the lower cost of living and according to bestplaces.net the cost of living in Texas is about 6% lower than the national average. And with that, one of your biggest living expenses, of course, is gonna be groceries and housing. Groceries are about 7% lower than the national average. Now, when it comes to housing and the overall cost of housing in Texas, it's 17% lower than the national average. That's huge. And I can see why a lot of people love the prices of homes here in Texas. The median home price in Texas in March of 2023 was about $341,000. Now, if you compare that to the national median average, of $400,000, you can see the difference in pricing of housing in Texas versus the rest of the nation. So depending on where you choose to live in Texas, $340,000 can get you a great three bedroom, two bath, depending on where it is. In the urban areas of Texas, like your big cities such as Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio, you're gonna spend a little bit more being closer to those core cities than that $340,000 price point. Another great thing about living in Texas is how friendly the people are here. This is definitely something that I noticed the first time I came to visit Texas. So I went to Texas Christian University and when going to visit the university, everyone was so friendly and not just in the university grounds, but when we went out to restaurants and out to eat, the people were so friendly. People wave, people smile, which was very refreshing. And we definitely have held on to that. Even in our neighborhood, the neighbors are super friendly. We all kind of look out for each other. And I think that's something that a lot of states and cities kind of miss out on, especially if you're not in the South. So when it comes to job opportunities in Texas, Texas does not disappoint. In fact, in 2022, Texas led the country in the number of new jobs. So plenty of job opportunities. And I, I wanna say that it's not just jobs, it's entrepreneurial business opportunities here. I always tell people, Texas is a, is a very business friendly state. So if you have the aspirations of starting a business, Texas is a place that I would definitely consider. Lots of support, lots of resources to help you get started. And if you're thinking big, thinking Fortune 500 companies, there are 53 Fortune 500 companies just in Texas. All that to say, lots of job opportunities, lots of business opportunities. If you want to start your own business, Texas is definitely one of those states that could help you out. And I think you can thrive. One of the things that I, I hear people talk about, especially if they're moving from different states, is Texas is the state of milk and honey. You can definitely make it here. It just takes that work and that grind and you can definitely have a great life here. So when it comes to sports, Texas is definitely one of those states that kind of has it all. If golf is your thing, you have plenty of golf courses sprinkled throughout the state. And these golf courses are usually parts of resorts. So it can really be a great experience of golfing, staying at a nice resort and it's really a good thing because you can bring your family and you know do your golf thing and family can be entertained. Of course, you have your hockey, your baseball, your football, um, NASCAR. We kind of have it all. So Texas is one of those states where if, you, if sporting is your jam, 
you have plenty to choose from. It really is a sport lover's dream. You have the Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Stars, Texas Rangers, Houston Astros, the Houston Rockets, the San Antonio Spurs. There's also some professional soccer teams in the state. And then if NASCAR is your thing, we have the Texas Motor Speedway, which is in Fort Worth, Texas. And even Austin is having F1 racing events. So it's a little bit of everything that you can choose from when it comes to sports. And of course, we cannot forget about college football. College football is a huge thing here in Texas. Texas is a very competitive state when it comes to college football. So of course, if you're considering a state, you want to know about the entertainment options in that state. Texas is definitely one that has a little bit of everything for everyone, I like to say. You have your, your amusement parks and things like that if, you, if that is your thing and you have family, a family or kids that like to enjoy like Six Flags over Texas or SeaWorld, but there are also some cool kind of adult things to do, like different wineries throughout the state, um, especially in the hill country. You have resorts that you can go to. You even have beaches here in Texas since it's right on the Gulf of Mexico. And of course you have all types of festivals. One of the biggest ones in the state is South by Southwest, which is held in Austin every year. And that festival, is just kind of a conglomerate of different entertainment, technology. If you just want to learn about various industries, go to that festival or that, that event. And if you are an outdoor enthusiast, there are plenty of hiking and biking trails. You can definitely find your tribe here in the state of Texas as far as if you do like to hike or bike or you know just kind of do those outdoorsy types things there are lakes that you can go to sail or kayak just a little bit of everything for everyone and of course believe it or not we even have mountains in texas and big bend national park is one of those parks that everyone needs to visit at least once when you come to texas one of the other good things about living in texas is when it comes to concerts and things like that Texas is usually one of those states where a lot of entertainers will come and perform. So because the state is so large and it does have some pretty good sized cities, the entertainers definitely will hit the, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, definitely probably the Houston area, San Antonio, and sometimes even Austin. So if you like entertainers or musicians or like going to concerts, chances are your, your person will be making a tour through Texas. So if you're anything like me, foodie, I'm a foodie, food is very important <laughs> when it comes to considering a state. And Texas has many food choices. So you can have the chain restaurants or you can do more of the local kind of mom and pop restaurants. Plenty to choose from as far as all the different cuisines. So when people think of Texas food, they think of barbecue and beef and things like that. Yes, we do have plenty of barbecue restaurants, but there's also Tex-Mex and different restaurants from all over the world. As far as Ethiopian food, you have Asian cuisine, you have all types of cuisine that can satisfy any palate. And this is like authentic food. So please don't come thinking that you're just gonna get, you know, hammered down with just eating beef. <laughs> Yes, beef is a big product here in Texas when it comes to food, and you'll find plenty of beef and barbecue here. But there's a wide variety of different cuisines here in Texas, and I enjoy all of them, and I think you will too. So one of the things that people consider when moving to another state is, how are the schools? Texas has a wide variety of schooling options, which I really appreciate. Some people love the homeschool route, and although that's not something that I experienced growing up or my kids experienced, that is an avenue to, to explore educating your child. Another thing is we have private schools. So private schools and charter schools are kind of like a big thing in Texas. I love school choice. You should have a variety of choices when it comes to educating your child, and Texas definitely does have some a variety when it comes to that. So you have private schools, you also have charter schools, but in Texas we have independent school districts, which are basically school districts that are specific to 
certain cities or areas. The independent school districts are governed by a state agency called the Texas Education Agency, and you are free to look up how schools are performing. I tell people to go to txschools.gov to look up different campus and district accountability as far as how they're rating. You can also look up some other indicators within that district of how they determine that rating. So you can look at how, how school districts are closing the achievement gap between different populations. You can look at the graduation rates. So definitely check out that resource. It's something that we tell a lot of our clients that are relocating to the state to use when trying to figure out where are the best schools in Texas or in the Dallas-Fort Worth area? And of course, higher education is a big thing. We do have two and four year colleges and universities, plenty to choose from, and they're not just in those rural pockets, they're also in the urban areas. So just depending on where you're moving in the state, you should have an, an option to attend a two or four year university. And a lot of these universities also have online components to where you can kind of do the remote thing as well. So if you're considering a state, you have to look at property taxes, especially if you plan on purchasing a house. Now, Texas does have property taxes that are higher than what you would see in the rest of the nation. In fact, according to the Tax Foundation, Texas homeowners pay a bigger chunk of their home value in property taxes than homeowners in almost every other state. So when it comes to property taxes, yes, we definitely feel the pinch when we have to pay those taxes every year. But the trade-off is we don't have a state income tax. Higher property taxes, no state income tax. It may be a total wash, I don't know, haven't done the numbers, but that is something to consider when you are considering moving to Texas. Now, a lot of people do squirm at the high property tax bills that they get in the mail when they own a home. But keep in mind, these property taxes are paying for our schools, they're paying for our police departments or our public servants, but they're also paying for our roads. So we like smooth roads. We like to be able to have easy access to different areas. Property taxes help pay for those things. So. It makes me feel a little better when I'm paying that tax bill every year to know that I do get to see my property tax money, some of my money at work. So we get asked a lot about the traffic here in Texas and the traffic is hit or miss. It depends on where you live. If you're in more rural areas, traffic usually is not a big deal. But if you are in those core cities, such as your Dallas, Fort Worth area, your Austin, San Antonio, Houston areas, traffic is going to be a part of your life and not just in those immediate areas but even in those suburbs of those major cities now one of the things that texas does do is provide toll roads so yes you do have to pay to access these toll roads through a toll tag but the trade-off is you get to save a lot of time the toll roads some of them fluctuate depending on the time of the day and the amount of traffic that is going on in the day, so you may pay a little bit more during rush hour traffic than you would a Saturday afternoon. But just know I take advantage of the toll tax because I like to save time and I hate sitting in traffic. So traffic is a part of life in Texas, but one of the great things I love about Texas are the roadways. We have great roadways, a great infrastructure, and they're doing a pretty good job with keeping up with the influx of people that we have moving to the state. Of course, there's always a few places that could, you know, rush the job and, and catch up a little bit faster. But overall, easy highway access, roads in pretty good condition, and that's one of the great things I love about traveling even in Texas. So when it comes to driving within the state of Texas, the drive from Dallas-Fort Worth to Houston is about three hours. The drive from Dallas-Fort Worth to Austin is about three hours and the drive from Dallas-Fort Worth to San Antonio is about four hours. So drive time in those major metropolitan cities, not that bad if you want to travel within the state. Commute times, not that bad. Even Waco is only about an hour from Dallas-Fort Worth. If driving is not your thing, there is another option that you can consider called Vaughn Lane that travels from Dallas-Fort Worth to those other major cities 
and it's kind of like a luxurious bus experience. It kind of reminds me of like uh, a chartered bus and an airplane kind of experience. Look it up, you'll get more information that way. But I thought that was a great option in, in, in addition to driving that you could look at for getting in and around those cities. Of course, Texas has a variety of different international airports as well as municipal airports that you can take advantage of if flying is your thing. I do love that there's usually one to two airports in these cities. Dallas-Fort Worth, for example, has two major airports. You have Dallas Love Field as well as Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. In Houston, you have the George Bush Intercontinental Airport and Houston Hobby. So you have a variety of airports, even within some of the major cities. And of course, having those international airports accessible, easy trip to Mexico for those quick vacations that you wanna take. Now, as realtors, we get asked a lot about diversity in Texas. And as realtors, we cannot speak on diversity specifically, only our experiences with our personal experiences. But I will say, there was a study done on Wallet Hub that was published and it shared that Texas is the second most diverse state in the country. That was no surprise to me. I always say, if you want to get an idea of how diverse a, an area is, look at the schools, look at the demographics in the school. Cause to me, the, the schools are kind of like a microcosm of the community. Texas is very diverse. That is no surprise at all when I read that, that article. So if diversity is important to you, I would strongly consider moving to Texas. A lot of people who think of Texas think of just flat, tumbleweeds type of topography. That could be furthest from the truth. Texas is very scenic. We have flat land, we have deserts, we also have hills and even mountains. Yes, people, we have mountains in Texas. We have plenty of hills in the hill country. The hill country is in central and south Texas. It's a great drive. You can definitely look at some different topography in Texas there. They have wineries and different bed and breakfast places that you can go to. So you can really make it a quick getaway with your significant other or just kind of have a, a weekend with the girls or the guys and explore the hill country. And you heard me mention mountains. There are mountains here in Texas. In fact, Big Bend is a national park here in Texas and it has mountains. So you can definitely experience all the different topography here in Texas. We have the beaches, we have hills, we have some deserts, and we have mountains. Also, if you're driving through Texas in the, the, the spring months of March and April, you'll probably see these beautiful flowers called blue bonnets, and that is the state flower of Texas. During the, those months, you'll see blue bonnets kind of lining the highways. You'll see families taking photos of their children or themselves just all along the highways in these blue bonnet fields. In fact, here in the North Texas area, Ennis, Texas is considered the blue bonnet capital. And so a lot of people flock to Ennis just for those photo opportunities in the blue bonnet fields. And if you are just an outdoors person, you can really enjoy being out and about in Texas, I'd say 10 to 11 months out of the year, just because the weather is just so pleasant. So it's just nice to know that you can enjoy outside time and not be hunkered down in your house because there are, you know, four months of sub degree, sub zero degree weather that you can't enjoy the outdoors. That's one of the great things about living in Texas is that you can be outdoors most of the year. And speaking of weather, the first thing that people think about when it comes to Texas is the heat. And yes, Texas does get hot. We do have multiple 100 plus degree temp days in the summer. It's not all summer though, so just keep that in mind. I'm used to it now, I've been here for a while, but it does take some adjusting. And humidity is something that I had to get used to also. So in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, the humidity is not nearly as bad as down near the coast in the Houston area. Houston humidity is a killer. It rains in Houston so much 
that it can rain and then you just feel like you're still in a sauna after the rain shower. So humidity is a thing in Texas as well. Again, Texas is such a big place that you could have humidity, but you can also be, you know, in the West Texas area where it feels like a desert. And when it comes to weather, we do experience pretty much all the seasons depending on where you are in Texas. If you're in that panhandle, you're gonna see snow and you're gonna see 100 degree temps. If you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you may not experience the multiple, you know, freezing days. We do have them. Um, we don't experience snow every year. Um, it's hit or miss, just kind of depends. But we do get to experience most of the seasons. It's just maybe small burst, um, depending on what the weather is doing that year. So one thing I do want to talk about that people always ask about are tornadoes. And yes, we do get our occasional tornadoes to come through Texas, especially in that North Texas area, because it is part of Tornado Alley. Not a lot of them, however, they do hit and we just prepare. We just, we know the drill, we know what to do. Um, me being from Oklahoma, tornadoes did not scare me. I respected that the power that they have, I just acted accordingly. We hunkered down, got into our safe place, and sometimes rode them out. Now, if you're down in Houston, you're probably not gonna experience tornadoes, but one of the things that Houston does experience is Flooding. So flooding can be a thing going on in Houston, just kind of depends. They do have a wet, kind of wet season. So Houston does experience flooding. They are only 50 feet above sea level. And some of the flooding that does occur is because of, they do get hurricane weather. Um, because they are so close to the Gulf of Mexico, they do get some of that, those hurricane winds and rains that kind of hit the Gulf there. So just be aware that if you're considering Houston, you might experience flooding and you'll know because if you purchase a house in Houston, they may require you to have flood insurance. Do you have any questions about moving to Texas? Call, text, or email and I'll see you in the next video.